Okay guys, here's the manual I brought up for the Sisson L4-175. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to go through it and tell you what I think about them. But it's pretty cool. Now, one thing I like about this company, okay, we are at the birth of all these really cool engines that are coming out. Um, you know, it all started with this thing right here. If you guys remember this thing, you know, this right here, when I seen this, I seen a lot of potential in our hobby. And you know what, this thing is just, it changed the world, you know. And now, with this, it's getting better and better and better. And, you know, the new V8 coming out, there are problems that we have to work with them to, you know, be patient. And because there's been so many different problems with the L400, but it's still an awesome engine. I mean, I still to this day will stand behind that engine, even though it has, a, you know, some quirky things that happen with the crankshafts and all that stuff. But everything else on that engine was spot on. It was no, it was good. So, so. If you want to read here, you know, when you first see the engine, you're going to think of the Panhead. The Panhead was a wicked cool bike engine that blew me away when I first seen that engine. And it, and it runs just like a real, you know, Harley Davidson, you know. Now, the dream is always to, to realize everybody else's dream. So, we're working together here. So, be patient, okay, guys. Um, you know, there'll probably be some things on here on, on this engine that, you know, may give me you know some grief or difficulty but you know it'll be okay so they're trying to make an engine that doesn't bother people all right which means that you know that has very few problems and in other words that's my translation you know um with their chinese language and stuff um but you know it says in reality there will be many difficulties for us to break through so you know but our satisfaction every time keeps them going and um, I am really glad that this stuff come out because you know years and years ago man it just didn't happen I mean you know we all we had was airplane engine to convert into our cars and then they were all two strokes if you wanted a four stroke the thing didn't fit and it was crazy crazy expensive you know and uh, so as time went on this is a whole new era of this hobby so you know I would embrace it if I were you okay so, what I like about what they put in there, maybe he's not perfect, but I believe you'll love it. Well, just the quality of the engine, you know, I think I can work through a couple of quirks or problems, you know, without a big problem. And then they give you your disclaimer here, you know, the engine is suitable for popular science model, yada yada. Please do not use it for any other purpose, like a pencil sharpener or something like that, you know, like you could actually buy a, a Conley stinger pencil sharpener you know and a, how about a fourteen thousand dollar pencil sharpener you know and you know just for your safety and stuff like that and then they give you the you know the perimeter description of the engine and um so it's 1800 to 8500 rpm which would be perfect for a crawler in my opinion so you know it's like and and the cool thing is over here they they do give you the initial oil settings of the carburetor when you start it up so that's good there too um and they give you a breakdown of the engine of all the parts and i'll stop there for a second so you guys can see it this is optional the oil filter i'm going to have to get one of those because i want one uh definitely because i'm going to probably run my oil through a filter that I am gonna to have to make myself to get this thing broken in which won't be a big deal but that will be a thing and they give you the you know they tell you your auxiliary oil needle you know your main oil needle which will be on the top here which you could probably turn that any which way you want and your idle throttle screws um, and they show you how to put your intake and your um, exhaust pipes on and then they got your side covers they call them side glasses they got your side covers here and um, now one thing here they, they tell you to be cool you know with, don't put you know measure your measure your screws with the caliper here so that you, you don't bind it into the uh, the flywheel and then ruin your flywheel 
and then they give you the dimensions of the engine so it's 135 millimeters from front to back they give you your uh, your mounting area so it's six millimeters apart for your holes and these are eight millimeters apart for your holes and then 15.5 millimeters apart which is cool now they do give you your, your width your height and all that cool stuff because this engine is actually wider at the back because of the bell housing that goes on there now they give you the igniter stuff and i don't have any of that right now it's supposed to be coming um and then they give you your oil pump adjustment this is important for your oil pump adjustment um i have not read through this yet but i will you know try to follow their recommendations to the t um because they they've already ran these things in they already know you know what what oils it needs and all that stuff okay so they're talking um you know 10 10 w60 you know recommended you know for special cases other labels are also you know acceptable so if you i'm going to run probably a, a 1050 you know in this thing but when i first break it in i'm going to use a break-in oil um that i use on all my old muscle cars it has a lot of zinc in it so wear gloves, zinc is very poisonous to our system. So wear the gloves and all that stuff, you know, and and uh, be cool with that. Then have your your uh, timing, they call it gas distribution time. They show your timing marks have to go straight up on your crank and your camshaft both. And um, doesn't matter where your idler pulley is. So just be, you know, be aware of that. And then we'll go down to, that's 12 of 12. Okay, we'll go back. see here I thought that was the one however uh, maybe not no this is the one here so that was our introduction and this is where it comes to breaking things down for your packaging you know some parts have already been pre-installed so don't worry about that um, you know if you see empty spots in your in your blister packs there they've already been installed so they give you all the layouts they give you all the numbers for each part, just like the Toyin um, L400 and all that stuff, which is really cool. I like I like the way they do it, and like I say, they actually put bubble wrap in the top of their packages there, so it, you know they don't change places. So this is where I'm going to start when I build it. I'm going to do my my carburetor, you know the you know the auxiliary and the main needles and all that stuff. Then they show you how to put in your cylinder walls. You need three O-rings per cylinder. And you could push them out with your finger. I found out they're very, very easy to do. But make sure you clean off all your stuff. You know, your edges and everything else. Make sure there's nothing, no lint, no dirt, no nothing. Um, and this is where they tell you about the, the M5, two, M2.5 screws that go into your this is how you adjust your oil pressure so that's pretty cool you know it's adjustable you know and they show you the crankshaft they do show you that there is you know a one millimeter adjustment shim that you can put in there if you need it um, that's where these come in right here that's where these come in and um, and then they tell you, like I say before, you know, you put in your center bearing and you don't use the outside. You know, it says here only the two, three millimeters on the side are forbidden to be installed. You don't want it, you don't want that. You just want the one in the center. And then they come down to your camshaft. It looks like it's a really simple, straight through, easy build. Um, you know, it's like I would, if I, you know, was on this, I would probably just bang it out but I want to do it on camera for everybody to see so they tell you you know a lot of information I really don't see nothing skip I, I didn't understand it on my phone because my my eyesight's not that great but um, you know 
Now it tells you here your piston pin bores, okay? This is important because your piston pin bores on both sides are different in size. So in other words, it comes in large on one side, small on the other. So check that before you start assembling everything. They do tell you your two different options for your, your rings. And um, you can use a rubber O-ring, but at first, it, you know, the, the silicone O-ring is going to wear out, but it will give you a lot of compression. Um, I'm going to use the two metal rings in mine. Um, the thing is that's really cool about these pistons is at the very bottom there are holes for it to lubricate and hopefully the second ring will scrape some of the oil away so I have a feeling it's going to smoke a little bit and then they, they tell you about your rods you know they're high strength rods and all that stuff um, and then just like the, on the L400 they do have tabs for your connecting rod bottoms to go to the, the big end there to made up because they're you know the machine for that application and um, and then mark them in order just like you know the crankshafts numbered mark your rods that way too and let me see then they go to your side covers you know and just use a little Loctite that's what that stuff is right there that air, air and aerobic glue is just a little Loctite don't, you don't have to go crazy with it. Um, I don't know if I have any blue. I knew I have red. Um, now this here is another important step here. They have your option one, option two here. Um, one, you can just put, they give you just a seal for your crankshaft, okay? And then they give you one with a copper um, mounting area in it. It's probably best to use the copper, but if you have to tear it back apart, it's going to make it more difficult with the copper one. With the rubber one, I would probably, I'm going to use that at first to, to break the engine in, and then I will probably take it out back apart again, and then I will put the copper one in it when I know that everything is good. Because that way there, it's going to be there for a long time. They show you, you know, how you install your, um, your starter motor and all that stuff um, this here is a really cool um, kind of a clasp um, I guess um, what it does is when the, the tighter you tighten it the more it expands it's almost like a, a welch plug or a soft plug in a, in a car engine the ones you put in there with a bolt and um, and they give you side notes on the side here see I didn't see these on my phone so you know it was like like I say my my vision is horrible of all the welding I did in my life you know so now here this is this is where they're being totally honest and transparent this is what I like about this it says before installation I'm sorry to tell you a problem okay during the sample test the starter motor never failed because the engine has already been broken in but they do sell a gear reduction um, they you know mine didn't come with one but I imagine um, we could contact them if you have a problem in turning it over a gear reduction would be cool because they say it breaks it um, the original gear reduction is 21 times to 1 and the improved reduction is 33 times which means it's going to turn over slower but if you have a lot of tension built up with your rings and it's really a tight engine um, that you know the other the 33 one is going to help it break in and start so and then they show you how to install your valves you know and they give you all kinds of footnotes and stuff and keep them in sequence as you see in my last video mine fell over this is where the dial caliper comes in right here as they tell you right there your intake is 10.25 and your exhaust is 10.20 so you know that way there it's uh once you put it in use a little loctite you're cool and then this is your oil pump okay i haven't really got into this yet it just seems like it's a basic you know oil pump just like the um, it's basically like the water pump on the l400 it's got the two gears in it and everything else except it's pulling oil in and um so i'll get to that and the next section is the water pump okay they show you how to use the water pump they show you you know how to put it together and then they show you your 
shims and stuff that you need, which is basically a gasket. And, um, and then they want you to put a little Loctite on the pulley, okay, so the pulley doesn't come off there. And, um, which is not a bad idea because there ain't nothing worse than when you get the thing running and you're all excited and it falls apart. And now this is for your CDI ignition. They give you um, a wheel that goes on the back of the lower pulley that has your CDI magnet and all that in there. That has to set flush. And they do show where to put the CDI unit too. But um, now they give you your head gasket, um, you know, your, all your information for that. Um, one thing I noticed on this, there was no gaskets for the intake or the exhaust. So I'm going to use a little bit of uh, high temp silicone sealant on them just to kind of keep them, you know, sealed up there. So it doesn't start spitting around the sides. Um, it looks like it's the same exact gasket as the, uh, uh, the V400, the L400 and all that. That's what it looks like. So if you got any extra of those around, you'll probably be able to use them with these. Um... Then they tell you about where to put the your magnet for your CDI unit. Here's the CDI unit itself. Or it mounts right on the front of the timing cover here. You know, and it goes right behind the front flywheel. So, so pretty much, guys. I mean, this is like you know, I'm excited about it. So, like I say, it's a, you know, it's, it's going to be a cool build. So stay tuned. And um, my next video. Um, will be starting this so and I do have a couple other videos I want to put up um, one's a recognition video and two there's a company that hit me up for a smoking cool hot v12 I mean this thing is amazing um, I don't know if you guys have seen it out there on the internet or not it was there for a short time and then came back um, but they did email me and ask me you know if, to, if I was interested in, you know, putting it on my channel, and I am, I, I really want to do this with these guys. They're just a small, small machine shop, and they have a love for engines like, like we do, you know. But um, I'll get to that video, too, and I'll try to find all the information in the photos, because they're building them right now. Um, they built a prototype before, and it was the smoothest V12 I'd ever seen in my life. I was totally blown away of the quality of that engine. And, um... The price was really high at first, and we talked a little bit about it, and now the prices came way down, and, um, I mean, way down, where it's very affordable. So, if, for all you V12 guys that want something exotic, this is the engine for you. So, anyways, like, share, subscribe, guys. Love to all, and I'll catch up with you later, man. Adios.